Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. Olivia. I gotta be honest, this is another one of those scenes where it's like she's just overreacting. Don't get me wrong, I get it, her husband isn't her, you know, her husband doesn't remember who he is and everything like that, but she's, once again, acting like this dude is dead or something like that, you know, she's flipping out, she's trying to find something, she's making a mess, and it's just like, whoa, your husband isn't dead, okay, as long as he's alive, there's still a chance that he'll eventually come back to you. But the temper tantrums, the, the, the overreacting, it's just, it's it's too much. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't care since day one. And to be honest, I don't really still care. Um, now, that scene. <laughs> First of all, I don't know who this bum-looking dude is. That's not there telling Chase, oh, you got to sit there and arrest him. You got to sit there and arrest him. And Chase is like, yeah, I'm not on duty. So, so, so that, that's going to stop you from arresting. I was like, Chase, you know, at this point, you should just arrest him just because he's annoying at this point. Apparently, Ned is not there playing at a spot. And <laughs> Ned challenges this dude to some sort of, um, I don't know, song off or something like that. Now, Tracy, first of all, Tracy had enough with, with Ned's supposed shenanigans or whatever, seeing Leo get hurt and acting out and everything like that, and Olivia in pain, I guess, whatever. And she's like, you know what, listen, I'm going to sit there and bring him home myself. So she marches down there, and the minute that they start playing, the minute that she gets there, I was like, oh my god. And I was like, yo, listen, this is the first time that I've ever actually been happy to see Tracy come in, because... I would love to really just press the fast forward button. I was like, nope, mm -mm, I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> I don't I don't generally tend to do music acts on soap operas. Um, there's very rarities that I do, but it was like the minute I saw her marching in, I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> it was also like, I can't believe I'm actually happy to see Tracy. But she comes in there, and then she pretty much just tells this dude to just like go embarrass your parents somewhere else. Which I'm not going to lie, I did laugh my ass off. And she begs Ned to come back. And she's like, yo, listen, I don't care if you guys sit there and pretend, do it for the family. Which, I don't understand how pretending, like, like what do you even mean by that? What, what do you, you think he's just going to go back there? Like, I don't, I don't understand how proximity is really going to sit there and help. I feel like to me, actually do we actually do more harm. I, I get that she wants to then maybe try to help out Leo because Leo got hurt on the horse, which I don't understand how you just letting this little boy just run around, you know, the house unsupervised and you got animals that he could just jump on at any point in time. So I don't like, I, I, I don't get that. I'm like, Olivia, maybe we need to sit there and stop whining about acting like your husband's dead and just, you know, kind of keep an eye on your child. Just, just, I'm just saying. I mean, if Cody wasn't there, it could have been actually more serious. <laughs> it's just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get that. But, um, so you got that whole thing going, right? You got Gregory that wants to talk to Tracy afterwards because. Gregory found out that Tracy was the one that helped Chase get back his badge. And you see in the um, the previews that he does the damn thank her. At first, he was like, oh, what, what did that harpy do now? <laughs> it was like, harpy? Wow, I haven't, um, I haven't heard that term in a um, very long time. So while you got that going on, you got Lucy, right? Lucy is, you know, dressed in this super tight little dress or whatever, ready to, quote unquote, seduce Mar um, Jackson. And, you know, I guess maybe she is doing so. I don't know. Something Felicia was meant to say as far as, oh, you're trying to get back at Martin for him lying and maybe not, you know, wanting to marry you and stuff like that. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about trying to make men jealous. Okay. I'm not going to sit there and speak for all men. Men don't do so well 
when it comes towards um, trying to make this person a little bit jealous. Okay? Mm -hmm. Like with me personally, I'm not about those games. I'll be, I'll be so quick to sit there and tell you to kick rocks like there's no tomorrow. I don't play those games. Um, anyway, Jackson comes in and Felicia goes to the office to sit there and try to crack the safe. Lucy thinks that at this point she still isn't there playing him. Jackson already knows who she is. He knows who she is. He just doesn't know what she's really there for. Now, he does sit there and call her out by being like, hey, listen. Um, I don't like to be used. I don't like to be played. Lucy, in this feeble attempt, tries to, um, you know, bring on a charm or whatever, play footsies, because apparently that's what people used to do back in the day. I don't know if they still do that move. Um, while she's doing that, you got Felicia that actually breaks into the, um, breaks into the safe. And she finds some, she finds some, um, some fun. The minute that Jackson said that, oh man, I just, I got a client, you know, I got a kind of emergency going on, I got to sit there and handle this at the office. He knew. He knew that somebody was breaking into his office and he knew it was most likely had something to do with um, Lucy. So, uh, Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. Eventually, Felicia, I don't know, she just takes too long um, looking through this file. And then she gets the cops to come in. Cops come in, loose in handcuffs. And at this point, I'm just laughing my ass off because I'm, I'm just like, you really thought that like, you could just sit there and just play this dude. Like, like he hasn't been around the block. He's dealt with Erica Kane. You really think you could sit there and play this guy after, 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 Erica Kane with his is his ex wife. <laughs> Listen, I didn't even watch all my children, but I know through like reading um, different stories and stuff like that, and what people have told me, she is is and she's a legend. Okay, like Lucy is 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 an amateur compared to the great Erica Kane. So, yeah. Now, what you got that going on? You got Ava catching up with um, Nina and telling Ava that, I mean, telling Nina that, you know, he, um, her and Austin want to sleep together. Then Austin just shows up. He shows up and Nina uses the restroom or whatever, right? Or calls Sunny, I don't remember which one. Austin. Austin sits there and, and thank, you know, Austin sits there and tell Ava that Mason thanks you for, you know, getting rid of Paloma. And they already got a new nanny that, you know, they want to sit there and implant in the Sonny's, you know, um, you know, Sonny's house or whatever to sit there and look at the Avery. Which again, uh, listen, for plot purposes, I'm just going to sit there and just go along with it. I mean, I guess we're just going to act like security. The security guards, the, the hundreds of security guards just all happen to lose sight a little Avery at the same time. Anyway, Austin's like, hey, listen, we got a new mole and we need you to sit there and talk Sonny up and to convince him to sit there and hire her. Ava, once again, is not there doing pushback and it's just like, <sighs> Ava, here's the thing. This is going to wind up happening. And what Austin says is that, you know, Mason said you was going to say something like that. So Mason threatens Ava's mother, which I didn't even know that her mother was still alive, just to make sure that she goes along with the plan. Sonny comes in and Ava's like, hey, listen, you know, Pelora, you know, she, she's not working out, but don't worry, I, I, I have my own nanny. And at first, Sonny Smith, they give him pushback, like, eh, I don't really know, but eventually he's like, all right, you know, I'll see what she's like and, you know, I'll prove her and stuff like that and we'll go from there. I forgot this chick's name. I wrote it down somewhere. Betty something. So it's going to be somewhat interesting to sit there and see how this plays out. So why you got that going on? 
you got Anna that wants to sit there and make herself the target. You know, she wants to sit there and smoke out whoever this person is. Dante's against it. Sonny's for it. And then Dante, and then, and then Dante's like, all right, fine. Because he, he's just saying he tries to persuade her not to do it. Your life is in danger. I care about you, yada, yada, yada. And it's like, this is my life. I'm doing what I want. So Dante's like, all right, well, if you're going to do it, I'm going to do it. So for the next 20 to 30 something minutes, they go back and forth with Anna Smith. They're trying to give Dante reasons not to do it. And in the end, you know, he convinces her to, to um, partner up with her. So she does it, which is like, <laughs> it, was just, it was just one of those things where it was like, I'm just not there watching and it was like, they're going back and forth and back and forth. And I'm looking at it as like 350 something and she's like, all right, yeah. I was like, well, that's, that's good. Um, so glad I actually had to sit through all that. You know, it's like you knew exactly the way it was going to go. And all this back and forth talk, oh, you're PTSD, you're a family man, blah, blah, blah. Blah, and and the cops and stuff like that and he's like no I'm gonna do it okay then it kind of just overextended the law and in the end it <laughs> we all knew it was gonna wind up happening so what was the what was the twenty minute back and forth for oh wait I'm sorry we gotta sit down pat this this show out I forget about that. And I should sit there and mention that Brooklyn was in it in the episode. She didn't really do much of anything, but she was just there. So, still think about the Friday or Thursday when I think I totally forgot that Michael and Willow was in the episode. I mean, they didn't really do anything, but they were there. There, so I feel like that's pretty much about it. I can't think of anything else that wound up happening. But as I always sit there and say, if I forgot anything, come to the live stream tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We'll sit there and go through all the stuff that want to happen in GH, Days, B&B, and Y&R. So with that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next video.